Today I'm gonna to give you guys a little bit of an insight and an update as to what's happening in our greenhouses and what are some of the things that we're gonna be doing immediately to uh, just some of the work we're gonna be doing with our greenhouses, kind of how they're handling in the weather, our caterpillar tunnels, we're gonna check up on the crops in there and how they've been handling in the wind. We've had some windy days recently, but they've handled it pretty well. And I know that we're probably not as windy as some other places, but um, they're doing really good. So here in our tomato greenhouse, these are doing really well. These are coming on, some of them are three feet tall. We did the initial pruning and tying you can check out that video. That was on the last, uh, maybe a week ago when Mark was in here doing this. They've made a lot of growth since then, so this is great. Um, on the canopy down below, our interplanted lettuce is doing really well and um, we'll be coming in here to harvest some of this probably tomorrow, actually. And um, I'll keep you updated with that. That's gonna be an interesting strategical move and a balancing act on how we do it. But uh, it's nothing we haven't done before. So we'll, we'll see how it all goes. We're all relatively fleet of foot, young, healthy men who will be able to manage it. So that shouldn't be much of an issue. But basically, you know, I just wanna give you guys here, um, just kind of show you what will happen with these tomatoes is they're coming up here and they're not suckering like crazy yet. So we can see in there, in the crotch of those two branches here, a little sucker branch. That's nothing to worry about at this stage. Uh, here's another one with a decent size, another a decent size sucker. So that's more what we're looking for as, uh, as far as what to prune, that kind of action. Uh, we could continue to clone our tomatoes and, and do some more stuff like that, but that's what we'll be doing is pruning off those suckers and then giving these tomatoes one little twist. I don't want to do it one-handed because I don't want to break the branches, but twist them up, just making sure that we're very careful to not knock around the blossoms on the tomato there because that's going to be our fruit. And so our tomatoes are starting to fruit, so that's real, or they're starting to flower on mass, so that's really good news. I'm thinking that we'll be picking tomatoes in a month from now, given that we, we get some more sunny days like we've had today, and uh, we'll be harvesting lettuce almost immediately. So we've still got a decent amount of ladybugs in the greenhouse, they're mating, they're reproducing, but I am looking around at my lettuce and I am seeing I still am seeing some amount of aphid pressure on it, not a ton, and they're no longer on the tomatoes. Well, at least they're not inhibiting the growth of the tomatoes uh, from what I can see in any ways. Usually I, I, look, I look underneath the leaves of things. That's where you look for aphid pressure, is on the underside of leaves. And so going down here into my lettuce, I'm looking at the underside, and so down here, I do have some aphid pressure in there. I've looked around a little bit, I see some of that, and um, I think what's happening right now is that since I've opened that greenhouse, the ladybugs have been leaving. Because one of the problems with ladybugs as a, as a beneficial insect is that they leave. So they eat and then they leave. They'll just go somewhere else. So what we've got to do is trap them in here. And so what I think we're gonna do is put an insect netting on that wall on the inside and then we can open it and have it ventilated and then bugs won't fly out or in. So some people might say, hey, well, aren't you gonna prevent pollinators from coming in? And not, not really so much actually. In the, in the case of tomatoes, tomatoes almost self-pollinate. They can pollinate themselves. Um, but there's other bugs that can pollinate too. Moths can pollinate. Any insect that touches that flower and touches something else will pollinate it. So I'm not too worried about that. I would rather just get rid of the aphid problem altogether. So I might just order another batch of ladybugs. It was $60 for 3,000 of them. I might even just order half of that and uh, trap them in here and just let them go gangbusters on it and really just get the problem dealt with. So all this Salanova in this tunnel was planted on Monday and it's doing really well. It's standing up straight. It's coming along. It looks like we've got almost 100% of it standing up, so that is fantastic. 
This is probably three weeks away from the first cut. So that's exciting, so we're on succession. You know, one thing that's so great about this crop and the way we do it with our landscape fabric is it allows me to get a piece of land into production really quickly because I don't have to worry about weed pressure. So case in point, the plot that we just started at the end of last week, um, we will be able, to, once that plot is tilled up, beds are shaped, compost and fertilizer is in those beds, I could pretty much put a Salanova crop in those beds immediately with the fabric. And I did the exact same thing here last year. If you go back a year ago today in my videos and look for either the weekly up, I think it was the weekly updates I was doing at the time, but if you go check that out, you'll see when we turned this plot over and we got it into production relatively quickly and planted with Salanova. So we've done it before, we'll certainly do it again. in my short tunnel, the shortest greenhouse I've ever built, <laughs> my 25 foot caterpillar tunnel, my radishes and turnips are up, so that's great news. So that means that this week, beginning of the week, we'll be starting another succession of those. I'm not exactly sure where they'll go. Uh, actually, I've got a, a bed and a half available in the front yard, so I'll plant some there. And then we have the two caterpillar tunnels at one of our satellite plots that we um, prepared some beds there. So we will get some crops planted in there. We've got another batch of Salanova started and that one will, th th that batch, so I've got um, four 50 foot beds worth, that will go at the new plot that we've been developing. Uh, I imagine that those beds will be more or less ready at that point to take a Salanova crop with landscape fabric just like this one. This greenhouse, this is the front yard one, the controversial front yard greenhouse. This one's doing very well. Overwintered spinach is just pumping. Going on to its second cut there. And uh, we had, because these beds are like 40, they're 40 feet long, we had a half bed. And so I will plant some radish in these, these beds here tomorrow. And uh, then this greenhouse will be planted out. As soon as these beds of spinach, you know, I might do one more cut from this one and then turn this bed over immediately, get something else, some kind of quick growing green or perhaps radish into there. But these beds are in high rotation and because of this caterpillar tunnel, I'm suspecting that we'll probably get more than four crops in each of these beds throughout the season. Here my flagship plot and uh, just checking on the tunnels here. Red Russian kale doing great. I'm gonna succession plant that again now. The true leaves are just starting to emerge through the cotyledons, so that's great. Spinach is pumping. We should probably harvest all of that this week. And then let's check up on this other tunnel here. Yeah, perfect. So second succession of spinach is doing really well. My tatsoi is also popping through its true leaves. And my arugula, not so much, but that's okay. I have another arugula crop at the heated greenhouse that's a little bit further along than this one. So I probably won't plant arugula this week. I'll plant tatsoi for sure, red Russian kale for sure, and radishes for sure, and turnips for sure. But I might wait a little bit longer on the arugula because it's still just coming along. If I were to plant it again right now, it would for sure catch up to this one. So I wanna wait a little bit longer. A lot of green in here. This arugula, I think we'll be ready for a cut in less than a week, which is fantastic. Tons of spinach in here. There's probably at least 40 pounds of spinach to harvest in here. 
that's great. This is often the situation with the overwintered stuff that comes along. You almost need to go into a succession harvest, and I've done a video on harvesting in succession before. Click up here to check that out. The, print, the same principle applies. That one particular video is about lettuce, but this one will more or less be the same with the spinaches. I want to harvest a certain amount so that I can stage them in succession of their regrowth. And so that's what we'll start having to do here is we're almost going to have to harvest even more than we need just to get it cut so that we can have a succession of regrowth that creates a consistency in the crop. And so that's what I'm looking to do here. But these tunnels have done really well. Second one here, lots of spinach here as well. But this one I could wait to cut a little bit. The, the other three in there should be cut sooner than these two, that's for sure. So this is part of that thinking in succession. One of the things that we're gonna have to change with this is on this tunnel here, the bow is a bit too radical, a bit too much of an angle. So we'll come in here next week, push the angle back so that we get a bit more slack with the plastic so this doesn't keep happening. The, uh, the weights, the plastic keep pulling the weights off, so that means that there's not enough slack. So that's an easy fix. All in all, I'd say these tunnels have been a really great success so far. We've had winds, like today we got up to 40 kilometers. I'm sure we've had winds over that, but uh, they seem to be handling pretty well. And again, I know I'm not as windy as some other places. So we will get these empty beds into production pretty quickly. We'll plant them this week, uh, come and fix these greenhouses. But uh, that's kind of what's happening on the farm right now. I wanted to kind of just check up on these greenhouses and see how they're doing. I mean, I already love how much easier these are to maintain than low tunnels because in previous years, we'd be coming to fix wind damage and adjust them a lot. Whereas in this case, except for this one situation here, we haven't had to do that at all. They've handled the wind very well, a lot of less moving parts. So I'd say, I'd say they're a total win. All right guys, we'll talk to you later.